My wife and I have a six-month-old baby, and he is the light of our lives. Before our son was born, however, my sister made it known that she was not a baby person. I've known this nearly our whole lives, and my wife even knew, but I'm starting to wonder if she didn't quite take it seriously. Sister came to our baby shower, where she again made it known that while she was happy for us, she wouldn't have much to do with the kid until at least they were older. I remember my wife making a comment along the lines of, oh, he's gonna love his auntie, or you'll love him when he gets here, or something like that. My sister just laughed it off, but I saw the irritation in her eyes. I talked to my wife that night and told her that my sister was serious. I know her and she really doesn't like babies and small children, and that we shouldn't try to force her to interact much with our little one until she's ready. We had a bit of back and forth, but the conversation basically ended with my wife saying that, okay, of course we won't force her. Fast forward a few months, our baby boy it is here. Sis showed up at the hospital and brought us a balloon to show support. But she didn't really interact or look at our newborn much and left quickly. My wife was too distracted with doting, loving on our son to really notice. Fast forward a few months to about a month ago when our son was five months. I had planned a nice dinner date for the two of us at a very exclusive restaurant, a place she's always wanted to go to and is always booked out. I surprised her with a reservation that I had booked a few months in advance, around her birthday. I thought it would be good for both of us to have a night out and take a quick breather from parenthood and to reconnect as a couple. She was very excited for it, so was I, but a few hours before our reservation, our babysitter canceled. Wife frantically suggested we call my sister. Our parents are both aged and not able to move around a lot. I knew that sis was gonna say no, but wife was very insistent. I tried calling a few friends first, but everyone was busy or couldn't since it was very last minute. Finally, after my wife insisting some more, I called my sister. I told her what was going on, and of course, I was right about her answer. She said she was sorry, but she didn't want to. I told my wife this. My wife asked me if I could put her on speakerphone. I was hesitant. After I put her on speakerphone, she shouted loudly into the phone, why won't you come watch your nephew? My sister was silent for a moment. She said she wasn't comfortable. My wife said, why not? He's your nephew? At this point, I took her off the speakerphone and told my sister I'd call her back. My wife was hysterical in tears. We didn't end up making the reservation. I tried to comfort her by telling her that we could still do something that weekend for her birthday. And I'd reschedule the reservation for whenever they were next available. But she wasn't in a good mood for a few days after this occurred. And I knew at that point that she really disliked my sister. Yesterday was the day that everything went south. I got a call from my sister saying that she needed me to come take her to the hospital. She was having an emergency. She lives less than 10 minutes away. This was about 11 p.m. Baby and wife were asleep. I texted my wife where I was going before I left in case she woke up and left. Everything went well, sister is okay, but we didn't get out of the hospital until around 6 a.m. When I got home this morning, my wife at first didn't say a thing to me. I asked her if she got my messages throughout the night if she was all right. She didn't speak. I went into the office to work. Yes, I work on Sundays. And about 10 minutes later, she barged in the room and started yelling. She told me that it's insane that I left her in the middle of the night to go help someone that doesn't want to help us. She said that if it was that big of an emergency, she should have just called the ambulance and I should have woken her up to tell her first. We went back and forth for a bit, but in the end, she told me that if I don't cut my sister off, she doesn't know what will happen to our relationship and I need to prioritize our family. I know she is still upset about what happened last month, but to completely cut off my sister, I don't think that's at all an appropriate thing to do. All she did was assert her boundaries, though I won't lie. I was hurt and a bit frustrated when we lost our reservation, but I got over it because I've known that my sister wouldn't want much to do with the baby for a while. I love my wife and family more than anything, but my sister is also one of my loved family members. She has shown up in a way to the baby shower and the birth. Other than when caring for the baby, wife and I haven't spoken much today. But I don't want to continue things like this. I don't know how to approach the situation. She's still dealing with postpartum hormones. So I understand she may still be feeling on edge and protective of the baby. But I feel like we should address this sooner than later. I just want to in a delicate, compass way towards both of them. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one. As a teenager, my now adult son 
was adored by all the neighborhood kids. Parents would ask all the time if he would be willing to babysit. My son is great around kids, but he can't stand kids. As a young man, he is very transparent with everyone he dates that he will not be having children. There has been very little said by anyone to try to dissuade him. At 24, he has been approved for and has scheduled an appointment to get the SNP. And yet, a family friend of the same age, female, has been denied a similar procedure that would prevent her from having children because she is a woman, and doctors say no until she is over 30. There is a definite double standard when it comes to women not wanting to have or be around kids versus men not wanting to have or be around kids. I feel bad for OP's sister because I suspect that the fact that she is a woman inherently predisposes people to believe that she should have a maternal instinct. If OP had a brother instead, I bet this conversation would have never happened. Comment two. As the aunt who doesn't care for babies, I have been roped into babysitting. It sucks. The entitlement I get from my sister-in-law about doing it is wild because I am very open about the fact that I find babies and toddlers incredibly stressful and I have no idea how to appropriately care for them, what they can, can't do for themselves, etc. I don't understand the eye rolls I get from being honest about this either. I have chosen to be child-free and I love my life. I never made the decision to bring small humans into my life. So why do I have to grin and bear the consequences of someone else doing it? Your wife is being unreasonable, especially flying off the handle about you leaving her in the middle of the night. I'm sure she was fine now, Lil. Now for the update. Hey everyone, thanks for sticking with me through all this. So three days ago, things took a turn for the worse. My wife and I were still not on speaking terms after the argument about my sister. I decided to give her some space, hoping she'd cool down and we could talk things out calmly. But that evening, my sister called me again, this time in tears. She had just been laid off from her job and was feeling completely lost. She asked if she could come over to talk. I hesitated, knowing how my wife felt, but I couldn't turn my sister away in her time of need. I told her to come over, thinking we could talk in the garage or something, to avoid any confrontation with my wife. When my sister arrived, she was a mess. We sat in the garage and she poured her heart out about how she felt like a failure and didn't know what to do next. I tried to comfort her, but just as we were talking, my wife came out to get something from the car. She saw my sister and immediately her face turned red. She didn't say anything, just turned around and went back inside. I knew this was bad. After my sister left, I went inside to find my wife sitting on the couch, fuming. She asked me why I had invited my sister over without telling her. I tried to explain that my sister was in a bad place and needed someone to talk to, but my wife wasn't having it. She accused me of always putting my sister first and not caring about her feelings. I tried to calm her down, but she was too upset. She said she needed some time to think and went to stay at her friend's house for the night, taking our son with her. The next day I tried calling and texting my wife, but she didn't respond. I was worried and didn't know what to do. I went to work, but I couldn't focus. Around lunchtime, I got a call from my wife's friend. She told me that my wife was really upset and needed some space, but she and our son were safe. I felt a bit relieved, but still anxious about what was going to happen next. That evening, my wife finally called me. She said she was coming home, but needed to talk. When she got back, we sat down, and she told me that she couldn't keep living like this. She felt like I was always choosing my sister over her and our son. She said she needed to see some real changes, or she didn't know if our marriage could survive. I was devastated. I told her I loved her and our son more than anything, and that I would do whatever it took to make things right. The next day, I decided to talk to my sister. I told her about the situation and how it was affecting my marriage. She was upset, but understood. She said she would give us some space and try to be more supportive in the future. I felt a bit hopeful that things might get better. However, later that day, I got a call from my boss. He told me that there had been some complaints about my performance at work and that I needed to get my act together or face consequences. I was already stressed about my personal life and now my job was on the line too. I felt like everything was falling apart. That evening, my wife and I tried to talk things out again. She told me that she appreciated my efforts, but 
needed to see consistent changes. She said she wanted us to go to couples therapy to work through our issues. I agreed, hoping it would help us get back on track. The next day, we had our first therapy session. It was tough, but we both opened up about our feelings and tried to understand each other's perspectives. The therapist suggested we set some boundaries with my sister and focus on rebuilding our relationship. I felt hopeful that we could make things work. However, that night, my sister called me again. She was feeling really down and needed someone to talk to. I didn't know what to do. I wanted to be there for her, but I also didn't want to upset my wife. I decided to take the call in the garage again, hoping my wife wouldn't find out. Unfortunately, my wife came out to get something from the car again and saw me on the phone with my sister. She was furious. She accused me of not taking our therapy seriously and putting my sister first again. I tried to explain, but she was too upset to listen. She packed a bag and left with our son, saying she needed some time to think. Now I'm sitting here feeling completely lost. I don't know what to do. I love my wife and son more than anything, but I also can't just abandon my sister. I feel like I'm being torn in two different directions and I don't know how to make things right. I just hope that we can find a way to work through this and come out stronger on the other side. Thanks for reading. Am I the idiot for calling off my wedding after discovering my fiance's abusive past? I have no idea what to do or think. My fiance, 32 year old and I, 24 year old, have been engaged for a month and together for almost three years. He has been very open about his past marriage and divorce with me. He told me they married really young, they were together since high school, and that it just didn't work out, but there were no hard feelings. They were married for four years and have been divorced for longer than that. I always accepted this as true because I had no reason to believe he was lying. The divorce seemed amicable. I wasn't there, but I know that they split everything pretty evenly. And money is not a problem for either of them. And he and her even still talk occasionally. The timeline all matched up. They wish each other happy birthdays and Merry Christmas. I never saw a problem with this. Everything seemed fine. Just an unfortunate situation of bad timing or married too young. Well, last month when we got engaged, I obviously posted some pics. So did my best friend who took pics for us. I was and am so excited. Within two days, I had a message request from her. My socials are private and she doesn't follow me. I previewed the message and it just said, Hi, can we talk? I accepted and said yes. She replied with a lengthy message about having seen my posts about getting engaged through his brother and that she just wanted to let me know because she felt that it was the only right thing she could do. I asked her what was going on and she explained to me that their marriage ended partly due to getting married so young and being two different people, but mostly because during one of the last arguments, my fiance punched her in the face after having shoved her around. I didn't believe her because he has never ever acted even slightly like that towards me or anyone I know or have seen. I didn't reply for a while and she sent me a follow-up text saying she could send a pic if I wanted it. I said yes. She did send me a screenshot of a picture in her camera roll, the date circled. It was right around the time they split, according to him. Her face jaw was clearly bruised and she was crying. I didn't know what to say or think, so I just apologized for some reason. I said, I'm sorry, I just can't do this right now. She said it's okay, she just hopes I use the info accordingly. I have no idea what to do. I asked my fiance about it right after and he was very angry. He said she was lying, the pic was edited, and that he would never do something like that. He showed me clearly how the divorce was stated as irreconcilable differences and nothing else. He told me if he had hit her, it all would have been very different and he wouldn't be able to hide that. He told me to think logically. I ended up just telling him I believed him and I believe that she is lying. He was so relieved and told me so many times he would never do something like that. I want to believe him so bad, but I don't know what to think. What do I even do? What do I even believe? If he really did do this, why does she keep in contact? But what does she gain from lying? I don't know, I'm so lost, please help. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one, my first husband got violent and we divorced. Within a couple of years, he was engaged to someone else and hadn't known her for long. He could be very charming when he wanted to be. I felt I had to warn her and figured she wouldn't believe me, but I did it because I cared more about her safety than I cared about being believed. 
she didn't believe me. After they had been married for a year, she called me and apologized for not believing me because he hit her. She never left him, though. Strange choices people make, but my conscience was clear. Comment two. He showed me clearly how the divorce was stated as irreconcilable differences and nothing else. He told me if he had hit her, it all would have been very different, and he wouldn't be able to hide that. Not sure what basis he's using for this, but it's complete nonsense. He told me to think logically. I'm guessing the way those words came out was also pretty aggressive. He might wind up proving her honesty based on his reaction to this whole situation. Hopefully it doesn't end with you getting matching injuries with her. Now, for the update, thanks for reading my last post. Three months have passed since that message from his ex-wife, and things have been very eventful. I decided to put the whole thing behind me and focus on our upcoming wedding. We started planning the details, booking venues, and sending out invitations. Everything seemed to be going smoothly, but I couldn't shake the nagging feeling in the back of my mind about what she had said. One evening, while we were going over the guest list, I noticed that his ex-wife was on it. I asked him why she was invited, and he said it was because they were still friends and he didn't want to exclude her. This made me uncomfortable, but I didn't want to cause any more tension, so I let it go. A few weeks later, I was at a coffee shop with my best friend, and she brought up the message from his ex-wife. She said she had been thinking about it and suggested that I reach out to her again to get more information. I was hesitant, but I agreed. I sent her a message asking if we could meet in person to talk. She agreed, and we set a date for the following week. When we met, she seemed genuinely concerned for me. She told me more about their relationship and how things had started to go downhill. She said that the abuse had started gradually with him getting angry and yelling, then pushing and shoving, and finally, the incident where he punched her. She showed me more pictures and even some old text messages where he had apologized for his behavior. I was devastated. I didn't know what to believe. I went home and confronted him again, showing him the new evidence. He got even angrier this time, accusing her of trying to ruin our relationship. He said the pictures and messages were fake and that she was just trying to get back at him for moving on. I didn't know what to think, but I decided to give him the benefit of the doubt. As the wedding date approached, I started to notice some changes in his behavior. He became more controlling questioning where I was going and who I was with. He would get angry over small things and then apologize, saying he was just stressed about the wedding. I tried to brush it off, but the doubts kept creeping in. One night, we had a huge argument about something trivial, and he grabbed my arm tightly, leaving a bruise. I was shocked and scared. He immediately apologized, saying he didn't mean to hurt me, and that he was just stressed. I didn't know what to do. I loved him, but I couldn't ignore the signs anymore. I decided to take a break and stay with my best friend for a few days. I needed time to think and figure out what to do. While I was there, I did some more digging into his past. I found out that he had been in trouble with the law before for a bar fight, something he had never mentioned to me. This made me even more suspicious. I reached out to his ex-wife again, and she told me that she had tried to press charges after the incident, but he had convinced her to drop them promising to get help and change. She said she had believed him at the time, but he never followed through. This was the final straw for me. I decided to call off the wedding. When I told him, he was furious. He yelled and screamed, calling me names and accusing me of betraying him. I was terrified, but I stood my ground. I packed my things and left, staying with my best friend until I could find a new place. The fallout from this decision has been immense. My family and friends have been supportive, but it's been hard to explain everything to them. Some people have taken his side, believing his version of events. It's been emotionally draining, and I've had to cut ties with some people who I thought were my friends. I've also had to deal with the financial consequences of canceling the wedding. We've lost deposits on the venue, the caterer, and other vendors. It's been a huge financial burden, and I'm struggling to make ends meet. Looking back, I realized that there were red flags all along that I ignored because I wanted to believe in him and our relationship. I wanted to believe that he had changed and that we could have a happy future together. But now I see that I was blinded by love and ignored the warning signs. I've started going to therapy to help me process everything and rebuild my life. It's been a slow and painful process, but I'm starting to feel stronger and more confident in my decision. I've also reconnected with some old friends who have been a great support system for me. One thing that has come up in therapy is my own history. 
and how it has influenced my decisions. Growing up, my parents had a tumultuous relationship, with my dad being controlling and sometimes hurtful towards my mom. I think I subconsciously sought out a similar dynamic in my own relationships, thinking it was normal. My therapist has helped me see that I deserve better and that I need to break the cycle of abuse. It's been a hard lesson to learn, but I'm committed to making better choices for myself in the future. Thank you for reading. Am I the idiot for confronting my husband about our lack of intimacy and ignoring his trauma? I'm a 33-year-old female Asian happily married to a 33-year-old male Asian. We have been dating for about seven years prior to marriage. My husband has been really amazing. He really loves me, kisses me, hugs me, tells me he loves me very frequently, irons my clothes, does laundry, cleans the house. He is also good looking. I mean, he is literally everything you can ask for in a man, except for when it comes to intimacy. I am a very open-minded person. I assumed we never had intimacy before marriage as he respected our culture. Unfortunately, it has been a sexless marriage for the past five years. Initially, I've been extremely frustrated but shy to bring this issue up. The one time I confronted him, it became an argument and quickly made me feel like I'm not cultured enough for bringing this topic up. He even said at multiple occasions that marriage is not about intimacy. He gave multiple reasons for refusal, claiming he feels extremely ticklish and he does not know what to do. P.S. He works under healthcare. The most we have done is kiss. Whenever I touch him further, he pushes me away, saying he is ticklish. And if I go further, he says I'm purposely doing it knowing that he can't take it. We have never even seen each other naked. And honestly, whatever love that I had for him has been wearing off. I can't even recall when I last initiated kissing him because I know that it's not going to become anything more intimate. Most of the time, I'm just wondering if he is gay. I've confronted him once about it and it pissed him off. And there was once he said it's because we are not ready to have kids. I mean, how dumb can a person be to know that having intimacy is not equal to wanting to have kids now? Also, being an Asian, his mother has been bugging me on when I'm going to give her grandkids. I've been focusing on my career and let this pass trying to not let it haunt me. However, it is getting more and more frustrating as I am a very sensual person. I do not know how to bring it up anymore, as every time I talk about it, there isn't any conclusion. I mean, it's been so many years, anyone else would have left the relationship. I don't even know why I'm staying. Like I said, except for absence of intimacy, he is really a gem. What should I do? I pretty much know communication is the key solution, but it is so hard to communicate about this. Underscore, 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 underscore. Thanks for all the feedback. Really appreciate it. Unfortunately, there isn't any update right now. Since it is already a long-standing issue, it is going to take me some time to talk to him about it again, when I am ready to do it calmly instead of being infuriated. Thanks again, everyone. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment 1. He is either gay, asexual, not attracted to you, or has some serious trauma he has not addressed. At this point, you just need to sit down with him and say explicitly, I am not happy in a sexless relationship. We need to talk about why you do not want to have intimacy with me, and if that is ever going to change. I know it is hard, but it is literally the only way you are going to get a clear answer. Do not let him deflect or refuse to discuss it. If he absolutely will not talk about it, or he claims he will try, but nothing changes, that is his answer. No shame in ending a marriage with no intimacy. Comment two. Your husband sounds asexual, and while that is a valid orientation, your behavior has made it clear that you are not and you should not be forced to live sexlessly for him. Talk to him about dating other people and having intimacy outside the marriage, and let his mom know not to hold her breath. If kids are something you want, you will not get them here. So consider that as well if you decide to stay here. Now for the update, Thanks for all the feedback. Really appreciate it.
So two weeks ago, I finally mustered the courage to bring up the issue again with my husband. I decided to approach it differently this time, trying to be as calm and understanding as possible. We were having dinner, and I gently steered the conversation towards our relationship and how much I valued everything he does for me. Then I brought up the topic of intimacy, emphasizing how important it was for me and how it affected my emotional well-being. To my surprise, he didn't get defensive this time. Instead, he looked genuinely troubled and admitted that he had been avoiding the topic because he didn't know how to address it. He confessed that he had been struggling with something deeply personal that he had never shared with anyone, not even me. He promised to tell me everything, but asked for a little time to gather his thoughts. A few days later, he sat me down and revealed his secret. He told me that he had been sexually abused as a child by a close family friend. The trauma had left him with deep psychological scars, and he had never sought therapy or talked about it with anyone. He said that every time we got close to being intimate, the memories would flood back, making him feel vulnerable and scared. He apologized for not telling me sooner and for making me feel unloved and unwanted. Hearing this broke my heart. I felt a mix of emotions, anger at the person who hurt him, sadness for the pain he had endured, and guilt for not understanding his struggle sooner. I hugged him tightly, assuring him that I was there for him and that we would get through this together. We decided to seek professional help, and he agreed to start therapy to work through his trauma. In the meantime, I found myself grappling with my own feelings. I felt a sense of relief knowing the reason behind our lack of intimacy, but I also felt overwhelmed by the gravity of the situation. I wanted to support him, but I also needed to address my own needs and desires. It was a delicate balance, and I wasn't sure how to navigate it. As the days went by, I noticed a change in my husband. He seemed more open and willing to communicate. He started attending therapy sessions regularly, and I could see the effort he was putting into healing. We also began couples therapy to work on our relationship and find ways to reconnect emotionally and physically. One evening after a particularly intense therapy session, he came home looking exhausted but determined. He told me that his therapist had suggested we try to rebuild our intimacy slowly starting with non-sexual physical touch. We began holding hands more often, cuddling on the couch and giving each other massages. It felt strange at first, but gradually it started to feel more natural. During this time, I also had to deal with the fallout from his mother's constant pressure about having grandchildren. I decided to have an honest conversation with her, explaining that we were facing some personal challenges and that it wasn't the right time to discuss having kids. She seemed taken aback, but eventually understood and agreed to give us some space. As we continued to work on our relationship, I couldn't help but reflect on my own past and how it had shaped my desires and expectations. Growing up in a conservative Asian family, I had always been taught that marriage was about duty and respect, not necessarily love and passion. But deep down, I had always yearned for a deep emotional and physical connection with my partner. This realization made me more determined to fight for our relationship and to support my husband in his healing journey. One night as we were lying in bed, he opened up about his fears and insecurities. He admitted that he had always felt inadequate and unworthy of love because of what had happened to him. He said that he had pushed me away because he was afraid of being vulnerable and getting hurt again. Hearing this made me realize how much he had been suffering in silence and it strengthened my resolve to be there for him. As we continued to navigate this challenging time, I found myself growing more patient and understanding. I learned to appreciate the small moments of intimacy and connection, and I began to see our relationship in a new light. It wasn't perfect, but it was real, and we were both committed to making it work. Looking back, I realized that this journey had taught me a lot about love, patience, and resilience. It wasn't easy, and there were times when I felt like giving up, but I knew that we were both worth fighting for. We still had a long way to go, but I was hopeful that we would come out stronger on the other side. Thanks again, everyone. If you like this video, you'll probably like these too. Also, while you're here, please consider subscribing. It's your support that keeps this channel alive and allows me to make better and longer videos. Have a great day.